All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started now. Now, my name is Rudy. I work here at the Rhinestone World. For those of you guys who don't know, I do a lot of the trainings for the Wizard and Corel Draw. Uh, Matt also does a lot of the videos, a lot of the trainings, and a lot of more, the more expertise webinars. So I, I stick to the intermediate and beginner webinars, and then Matt will normally do the more expert level um, webinars. So we are going to be we're coming out a lot more classes and a lot more webinars in the future. Um, we're just actually working on some different things here to uh, to obviously get more knowledge out to you guys, which is ultimately going to make you guys a lot more successful. All right. So let me go ahead and bring in the design here, and let's go ahead and get started with this webinar. All right. So I've already uh, I have a volleyball right here. So one of the main questions, and I do a lot of the trade shows as well. So I always get a lot of questions on how do I bring a design in, trace it, and actually get it ready to create a rhinestone design. All right. So let's say I have a PNG image. All right. So this is my PNG image. And now here's the important part. This is why we're using Corel Draw here. All right. The reason why we want to trace the design, all right, is because if I go to my wireframe right here, you guys can see all it's can all it's showing me with an outline is that box around it. All right. So the actual volleyball right here, that actual ball is not highlighted. So there's nothing that's going to cut inside of this box. All right. So we're going to have to trace it and create a vector file that we're going to then send over to our vinyl cutter so it can recognize those cut lines and get this design cut out for you. All right. Or also, if we're placing stones on this design, now that we've created those cut lines, now the TRW Stone Wizard, uh, which is our software that we've created to do the rhinestones, will recognize those paths and actually add the stones to those paths. All right. So that the vectorizing is a very important part of the, the whole designing process. And it's obviously the first thing that we want to get done before we actually go into creating those multicolor designs, those multi-deck designs, or those rhinestone files, or so on. All right, so that's what we're gonna go ahead and do here today. All right, so the first way I wanna show you, and this is actually gonna be a great image to work with here, because it's uh, it's a full image, obviously it's a PNG image here, so there's no, there's no clip bar, there's no thick lines, no darker lines to go off of. So I wanna show you what's gonna happen here when I do a trace bitmap. All right, so first off, let's show you what a trace bitmap is. So up here in the top toolbar, you'll see where it says trace bitmap, all right? Now, if I go ahead and click on this, you'll see where we have a quick trace. Now, the quick trace is going to basically use the last trace that you used. So let's say I traced something previously and I did a clip art. And now what's going to happen in the, in the next item I go ahead and trace and I do a quick trace is going to do that clip art, all right? So that quick trace is just going to use whatever you've used last to trace this particular design. All right, center line, that's more used if you're working with uh, with text. That's gonna be a lot nicer for you. All right, and then finally we have the outline trace right here, which is gonna have all the different options depending on the type of design that we're working with. So let's say I wanna do a quick trace of, uh, let's, uh, let's say a low quality image here. Left click on that, and you can see what we have here. So it did trace the design, but now you can see there's a lot of shadows and different layers going on here. All right, so those are all different layers that we would have to combine, weld, or edit with our shape tool. So let's hit OK and see what we're working with here. So right off the bat, notice the first thing when I select my design, now that we have an outline around my ball. Oh, and it looks like I'm getting a phone call. I should probably put that in. Uh, sorry if, if you guys are calling right now. I'm going to go ahead and put that in Do Not Disturb. <laughs> sorry about that, guys. So what I want to do now, what I want to show now is if I go to my wireframe view, now you notice the difference between our newly traced design and our previous PNG file that we have brought in. All right, so as you can see, yes, we have cut lines now. So obviously, if I send this over to my cutter, it's going to recognize all these different lines here. All right, but as you can see, it's very, very sloppy, and it does it's not going to cut out like a volleyball. It's not going to cut a solid color. All right, so yes, I can go in here and right-click and then ungroup all objects. So when I do that, now I'm able to select all the different parts of this particular trace. So you can see I can move all those out of the way. And that was just done by hitting a right click and on group. Or you can also go up here to object and hit on group here and then on group right here as well. All right. But again, you can see there's going to be a lot of editing to do here. All right. Now, that obviously, that strategy will work if it's a one color, if it's a silhouette design, just a dark shape. Yeah, that would work. That would be a good way to go about it, but it's still you'll still have to do some editing at the end. Now, let me show you the quick way to, or not the quick way, but the more efficient way to be able to trace this particular ball right here and give it a nice looking effect without having to go through all this trouble of welding, combining, and changing the layers here, and so on. 
All right, so I'm going to move this to the side for now. I'm going to group it so we can compare them at the end um, so you can see the two different ones that we're going to create right now. All right, so again, we're going to go ahead and use our B-spline tool today when we're – so I'm going to combine it. You can see what happens when I combine, which I don't want to do. I just wanted to group it all together. So I'm going to group it all together. All right, now – Let's go ahead and get into the actual tracing with our tracing tools. So in today's webinar, we're going to be using primarily the B-spline tool. Now, you might see me switch it over to the Bezier depending on the design I'm creating. Um, right now, we're just going to go create this circle. So I'm going to use primarily that B-spline tool. All right, so we have our PNG image here. This is our original image. Again, if I go to wireframe, notice that we only have that box around my design. All right, so now what I want to do to start off is First, I want to lock the PNG image down, all right? So when I'm tracing around it, I don't, it won't move on me. So right now, it's very vulnerable. I can move it around the screen. So if, just in case if I, something happens throughout the, the actual tracing process and I accidentally click on the image and drag it away, you know, when I lock it, I won't have to worry about that. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and right-click on it and do lock object, all right? And you can also see up here at the top, we have our lock and unlock object as well up here. All right. Now the next thing I want to do is because you can see that this, this is a this design. Let me show you real quick here what's going to happen. So I'm going to choose choose my ellipse tool. All right, ellipse tool basically is going to create the circle for me. So that's how we're going to start tracing this particular design. All right. So what I want to do is I'm going to hold Control while I create this this ellipse or the circle. All right. So the Control key on my keyboard is going to give me a perfect circle, a perfect symmetrical circle. All right. So to start my circle, I'm going to left click down. And then I'm going to hold control, which you can see now it's creating that perfect circle around the ball. Now I'm just going to go ahead and finish it off by completing the circle there. Perfect. So now we have the first part of our design traced. All right. Does anybody have any questions as far as what we've done so far? Mandy, that was, um, that was control. Again, control. And then left click down and drag. All right. So while I'm while I'm dragging that's the my mouse to create the circle, I'm holding down control. Now what you got to do is make sure that you let go of the mouse first, and then you let go of control. You'll notice if notice if let me go back to my ellipse tool. If I go like this and hold control and let go of control first, this is what's gonna happen. All right. Now if I hold control and left let go of the left click first, and then let go of control, it gives me that perfect circle. All right. But that's a great question. That's actually something that um, you know, especially when you're first starting out, you do run into that situation, and it could be a little bit frustrating for you. All right. All right. So now that we got that part of the design incomplete, now we're ready to actually trace the indents over here because it's not actually laces; it's kind of just those indents in the ball there to actually give it that the texture. All right. So to do that, this is where we're going to go ahead and use our B-spline tool. Now this is a it's, it's a lighter ball. You know, I was going to go to wireframe. Actually, I'm going to still go to wireframe because what you can see is going to make it a lot easier for me to see those different um, grooves right there, those different grooves on the ball. All right, so let's go ahead and select my B-spine tool, which is located five tools down here on my left-hand toolbar. And if you click on that little right triangle at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, or excuse me, of that tool, you see the B-spine tool right here. A little bit for about four tools down, five tools down. All right, so let's click on that. Now we're ready to use this particular tool here. Now let me show you exactly what this tool is going to do. All right, so to start the trace, I'm going to left click, and then I'm going to keep left clicking everywhere I want to create a new node. Now what you can see is it's creating not only a curved line, but also um, previews of a line segment. All right, so there's two ways to use this tool. I can either use that, the curved line, or I can clamp, uh, clamp up the the curved line to any of those blue squares, which are my nodes, which is going to get me now a sharp corner, all right? Or that's just by left clicking. Now, if I hold down V as in Victor, while I left click, now you can see it actually gives me a sharp corner there, all right? So left click again without holding the V, and I can go ahead and go back to my curved um, line there. Or let's say we reach another sharp corner, hit V as in Victor. Now we have that sharp corner created there, all right? To finish your trace, we're going to go ahead and go to our fit, our starting point, which is our first node that we created. Double click on that, and we're set. All right. Uh, Shandy, yes, that is the spline tool, the B spline tool. All right. Now, let's say we want to adjust this. All right. So let's say we forgot to hit the letter V as we were going to create a sharp corner. What I can do is I can go here to my shape tool, and you notice again we have those blue 
squares right here, which are my nodes, I can go right up to the top here. So select one, and now we have the option up here to clamp control point right here, all right? So left click on that, and you can see what happened was that curved line now got clamped to that original node that we created there, all right? So basically, the B-Spline tool is creating a curved line, but also giving you a preview of what it can look like if you want to clamp it to those control points that you're actually creating. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So anybody have any questions? Okay, no problem there, Linda. No problem at all. So first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and either double click on your design, which is going to give you the nodes, or we can go here. Let's click on my design and go up here to the shape tool, which is right below my pick tool. All right, so shape tool. Now we have these clamp, or excuse me, these nodes that we can clamp the, our original curved line to. All right, so I'm going to go here. Actually, let's go here so you can see a little bit better. So we're going to go to this red one right here, all right? And now you'll notice when we select them, when we select those nodes, they actually turn into red, so they're not blue anymore, all right? So we have the red one here that we've selected. Now we want to make sure that this curved line right here is clamped to this point right here, all right? So now I'm going to go to the top, and you can see right here where it says rectang rectangular right here. We can add a node or get rid of a node. In this case, they're calling control points. But what I want to do is this one right here, the one that says clamp control points. All right, hit that, and there we go. Oops, sorry about that, guys. Looks like I muted myself accidentally there. All right, Linda, so that's all you have to do. All right, so now let's go ahead and get to tracing. So we've figured out what we're going to do with that B-spline tool. So now we're ready to create our design. All right, so here is we have the circular object around the vault so that's going to be the starting point that's going to be my outline now I can basically create my lines based on the outline there all right so let's go back to that b-spine tool and get started here so I like this shape right here I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with this since it's a nice uh, big kind of square there in the middle and I can see that basically all my grooves lead up to that exact that point right there right so let's go ahead and start off by creating my line right here so as you can see I'm just clear left clicking wherever I want to create a curve and then I can curve that particular point now right here this is when I want to create my first sharp corner all right so right here I'm gonna hit the letter V as in Victor and left click and now we can complete this particular groove right there all right now we're gonna go from here now notice how I'm starting every time I'm creating a new line I'm create I'm starting from my that basically from a node point or another segment that I've created before all right so I'm gonna create that from this line right here and just create my my uh, my trace along this particular groove right here. Now, because I'm reaching that end point right here, and I want it to be a sharp corner, I'm gonna hit the letter V as in Victor. Exactly. Perfect. So there we go. Now, quick little trick. While you're tracing, see how we're running to a point where I'm about to run out of out of uh, I can't really see the bottom of my design anymore. If you if you click down on the little scroller on your mouse, you have the pan tool, and now I can just drag down. And now I can see the rest of my design here. All right, so I'm going to keep left clicking down all the way till I get to my the edge right here. And it tells you once you reach that edge, it's going to tell you that, hey, you've reached the point right here where you're intersecting the lines now. Okay, so now you can stop that tracing. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and complete this part right here to basically finish our main frame of the ball. All right, so let's go here and start at this little corner. So right here where it says node. Now, notice that edge is referring to the actual line. Node is to referring to wherever I have clicked. So if I, that end point right there, I, I created a node. So now it's going off that node rather than the edge, which is just the line. All right. So now I can go here, left click down. So I'm just left clicking and creating that curved motion with my mouse. Reach that end point right there, double click, and we're done with that line. All right. Anybody have any questions so far? All right, excellent. So let's go ahead and keep moving now. Now I see that we have a couple lines right here, a couple grooves that we can complete right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. So again, through the edge, and we're going to go ahead and just left click, left click, left click all the way to my next line right here. Double click on that, finish that part off. All right, and then let's go ahead and complete this one down here as well. So same thing, we're going to go ahead and make the grooves here and double click there. And perfect. So there we go. We're almost done with this. We only have a couple more grooves to create, and then we're about almost done with this trace. Pretty simple, right? Not too bad. So let's go up here, and let's get this one completed. So we're going to go up to the top, and again, we're just going to create that curved line right there. 
perfect and finish it off right there on the edge same thing with this one and you notice it doesn't have to be a perfect trace all right and i'm going to show you here momentarily why we don't have to have it perfectly traced when we come when we're doing this step right here all right uh does it have to be exact on each line no shandy actually <laughs> it's funny i didn't even read that before I, was, I, I said that but no it doesn't have to be exactly on the line all right and i'm going to show you why here once we complete these last two trace those grooves over here on the right hand side once we complete these, I'm going to show you exactly why it doesn't have to be directly on that line. All right. So now I'm going to go here. And again, we're going to complete this groove right here. Double click. And then this one to finish off my trace. All right. So right there. Perfect. All right. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my enhanced view. Now, if you're not, wor if you're not working with the TRW Stone Wizard, you can also go up to uh, View and then enhanced. And you can see I haven't used it in a while. You normally use our toolbar here that comes with the Tree of the Stone Wizard just because it makes things a little bit easier to work with. Not so much looking around for different tools up here in the toolbar, it's just right there for me. All right, so now that I'm in my enhanced view, now we can see what we've done so far. All right, so let me go ahead and get rid of my background here or the original image so we can actually see what we've actually traced. All right, so again, this image is locked, so right click on it. And when I right click on it, and just because I know that there's a box there, I can just kind of guesstimate where to click on. But once I right click, now you can see that it gives me the locks here. So that's telling me that that particular PNG file is locked to my workspace. All right, so I need to go here where it says unlock and left click there. All right, so once I unlock it, drag this original image out. Now we have our ball right here. All right, but guess what? I notice here that our grooves are a little bit thicker. All right, so right now we have very thin lines. It's really not standing out much all right so we got to make those lines a little bit thicker so we can work with them a lot a little bit better and when we send them to our cutter it's going to cut out a lot cleaner all right so how are we going to do that we can do two ways we can either if you're working with our software you can obviously create an outline or excuse me an island fill for it or if you're working right here in corel draw we can go to the top right here where we have our outline width all right notice how it's at 0.5 right now karen snap to object uh, Karen, yes, we do have a snap to object. I do have that selected. All right, I do have that selected, yes. And uh, that's a great point, Karen. I'm glad you brought that up. Basically, that snap to object is going to allow me, any line I create is going to snap to this particular object here. So when I created that ellipse earlier, so when I went here, notice how it's, it's snapping right to the edge right there for me. So it does it automatically, so it makes that, that step a little bit easier to do. Um... Oh, after line. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you can also do that. You can also do that, but let me show you real quick what we're going to do, Karen. Let me show you real quick what we're going to do. That's a great That's a great step as well. And again, you know, I might have my own method of doing it. You know, you might have another method. It's honestly what it comes down to is the way that you find it more efficient to help your business grow. Obviously, you know, if my method, you don't think it's as quick, then hey, do it your way. That's fine. As long as it's efficient and it's going to get the job done and it's going to make you guys money, then that's the main point of um, doing this. So Rhonda, if you have an image picture, you can trace what you want out of the picture with this. Yes, absolutely, Rhonda. All we're doing here is basically creating a vector file of this PNG image here. All right. So you can see we can do this way right here and you can see how much cleaner this comes out. So let me go to my wireframe real quick. And we're not even done with this particular trace yet, but look how much cleaner it's already looking than this one. So obviously when I send it to my cutter, it's not going to have as much difficulty cutting the design out. I mean, obviously, this look, just looks like a mess. So, obviously, right off the start, you can tell which one I would prefer to go with because this one is going to take a lot more time to, again, edit those nodes and edit those different, uh, basically, those different layers that are located on that trace that we completed with the trace bitmap. All right. All right. So, let's go ahead and get back to the trace here that we've just done. All right. So, now we need to make those lines, the width of those outline or the lines a lot thicker. So again, we have this little feature right up here, this little option tool right up here that's going to give me the width, all right? So I can go to 8 and see how it's a little bit thicker now. All right, what do you guys think? You like like that that thickness there? You guys want to go a little bit thicker, maybe 10. All right, we'll go with 10. I like oh, 8. Okay, I see 8, 10. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we got a mixture here. What do you guys think? Tracy says 10. Jill says 8. Maxine says 8. Mandy says 10. All right, what are you guys what are you guys thinking? You know what? Let's go with eight. Looks like eight is the and Linda. Linda just had to ruin it. She said nine. I don't even think there's a nine, Linda. Way to be the difficult one. Always. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go we're gonna go with uh we're gonna go with eight since it seems like everybody wants eight. All right. 
So here's the only thing I want to show you guys. All right, we switched the width of my points of uh, of my line point. All right. Now here's the big problem with that. When I go to my wireframe, you can see we still have that thin line that we originally created. All right. So that thin line that we already created, that's what's going to cut out right now because we technically have not converted this to an actual object. It's right now. It's still at that line, that line art. All right. So we need to convert that into a object. And how are we going to do that? Very simple. Again, right here in our toolbar in the TRW Stone Wizard, we have right here where it says convert outline to object. All right. So right now it's just in an outline format. Once I left click on here, or also if you see right there, it tells you control plus shift plus Q is also going to do this for you. All right. So now I'm going to left click on that and watch what happens when I go to my wireframe now. Bam. You see that? Now we have nice thick lines. So it's not just a little thin line going through my design. Now, the only thing is you'll notice now we have some areas where they're overlapping. All right. And no problem. That's what we wanted because watch what we're going to do now. All right. I'm going to highlight my design here. And I'm going to keep it in the wireframe so you guys can see exactly what's going to happen when I do this. All right. Oh, Shandy, you're getting, a held, you're getting ahead of yourself. Shandy's already – oh, man, you guys are good. You guys are good. So, yes, everybody's saying it right now. Weld, weld, weld. Exactly. So we're going to go up here to the top. We're going to left-click on weld, and bam, there we go. So let's go back to my enhanced view and see what we're working with. All right, so there's my new trace. What do you guys think? Pretty good, right? Pretty good. So now – I know when I go to wireframe, bam, that's all going to cut out perfect for me. All right. Now, of course, let's say we want to create this into a two color because right now this is only a one color design. It's only going to cut out that outline. All right. So we still need to make sure or still convert this into a two color design. So very quick and easy to do this. Actually, I'll show you two ways that we can do this. All right. The first way, which you might find easier. I think my way is going to be a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. But this is one way you can do it is I can zoom in here and at the bottom right here of my crawl draw. Now, if you're working with X6, it's going to be a little bit higher on the toolbar. But with X7, it's right here. It's called Smart Fill Tool. So if I left click on that Smart Fill Tool, yep, <laughs> Smart Fill, exactly. I can, it's going to do exactly what it says. It's a Smart Fill. So I can go here and left click in all my little areas, all my cavities there, and fill those in. And bam, there's my two color design. All right. So. That's great. The only thing is if you go to, let's say if you're working with glitter colors, it's a one layer right there. You see that? It's just a simple layer, which is going to be very difficult to trap later on. All right. So that's why if you're doing this and, and you're, you're thinking to work with those glitter colors. <laughs> awesome. Glad, glad that helped, Karen. All right. But of course, again, notice how this is exact, almost hitting that outline right there. All right, so that that alignment is going to be very tough when it comes to the pressing part. All right, so this is what I like to do. All right, I'm going to go here and just separate this a little bit out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, the outline out of the way. Now, this would look pretty cool. This is one thing you could do like that. If you wanted to give this look to the design where we just have kind of the outline or the, the fill rather than the outline, that would work for that. All right, so that would be the best way to go about that. But you can see that even looks pretty cool right there. All right, when you remove that part out of that, so let's right click and we'll just do a combine to keep it all together. So there's my first trace. All right, now let's go ahead and create this in two color. Now this is what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to go ahead and right click on the, the new trace I've created. I'm going to go to break curve apart. All right, and then let's just go to make that pink. All right, so make that pink. Now all I have to do is right click on it. And then I'm going to go order to back of page. Oh, let's go to I think I changed both of the colors, didn't I? What am I moving? Oh, that's what I did. They were both pink already. You guys should have told me that. All right, so let's go back to page, and there's my design. So I can make this. Let's go make that black so you guys can see it a little bit better. And there's my trace. Now, the great thing about it, though, is when I do remove that top layer, oh, you go ahead and remove that top layer. What you guys can see is we have a solid background, all right? So that solid background, now I can go in here and do a magic trap. And it's going to give me that nice trapping that's going to make it a lot easier when I'm working with those glitter colors. All right, because we're going to have a little bit of extra layer in there to be able to. Now, of course, the trapping I'm, I'm referring to, if you're working with a TRW Stone Wizard, we do have that feature in there to make life easier. If not, we do have the videos that will show you how to do it in Curl Draw as well. Um, a little bit more tedious, but hey, it makes the process of pressing a lot better. All right. All right, so that would be the two ways to, to be able to do it. Now, again, it's, it's up to you guys, whichever one you prefer. 
um, which one you think is going to work best. But uh, I think uh, breaking apart and then just basically having a solid background is a little bit better to work with just for the different types of designing you're going to do and the different types of cutting you're going to be able to do in the future. All right, so that's that design right there. What do you guys think? So, again, let's go to wireframe and see what we're working with here. My original trace, not so good, right? There's my new trace here with our magic or with our smart fill. And then we have our two color design right here that we created using that break apart and then uh, changing the colors and bringing the, the solid layer to the back of the screen. All right. So that's one way. Okay. That's a, and again, that's just a simple shape. This is a PNG image, actually a real volleyball, a real volleyball image that I just grabbed from Google, brought in here, and I was able to convert it into a vector file. Not bad, right? So of course, wh which way do you guys prefer? I mean, obviously this was a little bit quicker. Probably took, I mean, it was quicker to trace, but again, if I got into the actual editing, it would probably take me an hour to edit this particular design just because there's so much going in there. All right, and I don't like the way the lines are inconsistent. I mean, you can't really tell. Yeah, you can, but you really can't tell it's a volleyball at this point. Yeah, B spine trace all the way exactly. All right, does anybody have any questions? I can go through the process again if you guys need me to. Let me know. Be more than happy to go back and uh, redo this one. Oh, Debbie, okay, no problem, no problem. All right, so we're going to go through it. Um, Debbie, let me know if uh, what step you missed along the way, all right? So we'll go over it one more time so you guys can see it, just in case if uh, – oh, the black, okay. Yes, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and go – I'm sorry. I think I missed – read that one. Okay, so do the, the break apart again. Let me go back here and start over. Okay. All right, no problem. All right, so again, we got a one-color design right here, all right? So let me get hit rid of that PNG image right there. All right, so there's my one color design right here. All right, what I want to do is, again, right click, or you can go to effects as well right here. Effects, or excuse me, um, object right here, and that's going to do it as well, break apart right here. All right, so we can do left click on uh, break apart. Now what we have here is two layers. You can see that, right? So that's why I need to go in here and change the color of my first layer. Let's make that yellow for now. All right, and then all we have to do is right click order to back a page and there's my two color design all right so there's my fill and there's my outline right there all right so now what you can do is basically select all the black combine those and then you have your two color design all right Does that make sense karen perfect debbie is that what you wanted to see as well or did you want to see the process again Oh, the process. Okay, okay, no problem. Do you guys mind if I go over it just one more time? I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure if you guys missed anything, you guys can see it again. Uh, Shandy, yes, same exact way for, same exact way for the football laces, exactly. All right. So why don't we do? You know, why don't we do a different design now? Why don't we do a different design? Let me go ahead and bring a different image in here. You know what? Let's let's. I'll leave it up to you guys. Let me know what you guys want to see. Obviously, don't keep. Let's keep it a little bit more simple, but. Football, huh? You guys want to see a football? Yeah, I, I think yeah, I think as long as we do the same process. Soccer, Jennifer, soccer, okay. Maxime Laces. Okay, let's see what's let's see what we can do here, guys. Let's see what we're gonna do. Let's see. All right, let me see. Let me see if I can bring this football in here. So what do you guys think? Uh, Shandy, I'm just bringing it in. I, I mean, we don't recommend that, but for the time being, just for the webinar, since I'm just doing education on it, I can do um, – I'm just bringing it in for that purpose. But other than that, no, I don't, I'd never recommend going to Google and getting any images. Um, this football in particular here is just a basic football, so. Um, boom, 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 boom. Okay, perfect. So it looks like everybody wants to see the football. All right, so I'm going to let you guys kind of guide me through it, so you guys got to help me out with this one, all right? So first thing we got to do, we have an image here. All right, we've brought it in. Obviously, we're not going to go to trace bitmap. Uh, Pamela, normally when we do custom requests like this, we get a lot of images. Our customers will send us the custom request, and then – we, we use, usually utilize those, all right? So normally the images that we're creating are based off what we're sent from our customers. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, and I do see, okay, everybody's saying lock it. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and right-click and then lock it, all right? Or we can go up here to the top as well and hit lock. 
So now we can move this particular design out of the way here. All right. So now again, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a darker shape. So I'm gonna go to my wireframe so we can see a little bit better what we're working with here. All right. So let's go ahead and get started here. So what I can do. Exact. Oh, Maxine's on top of things. She said outline the shape. So we're gonna go ahead and outline this particular shape. So again, I'm gonna use that B spine tool, and I'm just gonna go here. Let's go ahead and start right here, and trace around my object. Now again, I have that snap to object selected, so it's reading those edges there and snapping it for me. So it's making this process a lot easier. All right, so we're going around, and again with that B spine tool, very easy to trace around this design. Just creating some different nodes around the around my football there. Now, if I hold V here at the end, see how it connects it to that end point right there. So there you go. There's my first point. Now I might have to fix that up just a tad bit, which is fine. We can move this over here if you needed to by double clicking. And then actually, I'm going to unclamp it for right now. So we have a rounded edge there rather than our sharp corner. All right. Uh, where do you where do we select snap to object? Oh, right here. Let me go back to my um, let me go back to my shape tool real quick. So if you're still in this in this option here, and I go to shape tool, so everywhere I have one of my nodes up here, let's click on this one right here. So if I click on this one right here, you can see the option comes up at the top right here. Is there a different way to trace around an image? Just tracing. Uh, what do you mean, Rhonda? I'm not, um, the other way would be the trace bitmap where it just traces it automatically for you. But again, that's not, it, it doesn't always ensure that it's going to come out perfect. Um, where do we select snap to object? Oh, Debbie, I'm sorry, snap to object right up here at the top. You see at the top toolbar it says snap to right here, object. That's exactly where you want to go for that. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and move along. So, Obviously, what I'm seeing here is we got a couple lines, so let's go ahead and create, you know what, we'll create the this part of the design next, all right? So I'm going to go here, and again, we're going to start at the top here, and we're just going to go down. Now, right here, I'm going to hit the letter V, or what do you guys think? Do you guys think we should just finish it off all the way at the bottom, like so? I think this is going to look a little bit better this way. Now, okay, let's go back. I guess not. We'll go back. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go here and finish this off right here. So now notice where I'm reaching this point right here. I want it to be a nice, basically a V. So I'm going to hit the, excuse me, a, a sharp corner there. So I'm going to hit the letter V as in Victor. There we go. Same thing right here, V as in Victor. And then we're going to complete this trace right here. All right, so we're going to go there. So that part's completed. Now let's go ahead and complete this one over here. Now, of course, I can basically grab this one and trace it over here, but let's just go here and finish this one off right here. So, again, we're going to go ahead and hit the letter. We're reaching a, a sharp point, so what are we going to do here? Yeah, you guys are good. You guys are paying attention. That's good. Letter V, exactly. Now, we're going to get to this point right here and hit the letter V again, and let's go ahead and finish this part of the football off. All right, there we go. Perfect. So, what do you guys think so far? Uh, with the shift, I'm not sure what you're saying there, Debbie. What, do you, what are you referring to? With, uh, where do you select the? Oh, just V. Yeah, just V. I'm sorry, just V. So just left click down on the V, and then uh, just click on the location you want to place that node, and then you can go ahead and create that sharp corner there. All right. So now we need to finish off. I see a little groove right here, so we'll go ahead and complete that groove. So you can see it's again snapping to my shape. And again, it doesn't have to be completely perfect. We're going to weld it together here momentarily anyways. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Actually, you know what? That one I will move a little bit further down because, I, you know what, I'm going to do something a little bit different there. And you see where I ran off a little bit? I can just bring this line right back to this point. And then same thing with this one. We're going to go ahead and just move that down a little bit to there. So now we have that line going through, and then we're just going to go ahead and lift this one up just a little bit right there. All right, so there's that line. Actually, that's a little bit closer to that. Uh, let me go ahead and move this up a little bit more. And then we'll move this up a little bit more there. And there we go. All right, what do you guys think so far? Uh, Sandra, so left 
clicks are where the curve needs to be even though you're making a straight line. Yeah, Sandra, because you notice a straight line is just a preview of it. So the curve where I want that curve to go is right where I'm left clicking. Uh, Rhonda, to zoom in and out, I'm just using my my little scroller on the um, on my uh, mouse. Okay, so that center scroller there. If I go up, it zooms in. If I go back, it zooms out. Uh, Debbie, no problem. No problem. Just glad you're back in. All right. All right. So now we need to go ahead and complete the laces part right here. All right. So now I also see I have our little outline right there as well. So what we're going to do is when we complete all this is basically create different length, different widths for all the different parts of the design here. All right. So let's go here and just finish this and let's complete this part right here. All right. So quick line. Then I can go here. Make that one. Now here's why I'm going to use my Bezier tool. All right, so Bezier tool is pretty cool. Let me go ahead and show you guys what that's going to do for me because I want to just create a straight line here. I can click on the top part of my on my um, the object I want to trace and then click an endpoint and then just create a perfect oh, and create that point right there. All right, so if you hit, we're going to finish that off. Now we're going to go here, finish that off. Let's go here. Now this is more of a curved line, so I'm gonna go back to my B spawn tool right here, and kind of create more of a curved line right there. Same thing right here, and just finish it off right here. Now again, I'm just gonna do that width for this part, so it's gonna make that design basically. There we go. So it doesn't look like much yet, of course, but I can go here and change that point size, let's say to eight, and you can see it kind of. Oh, did I miss one? <laughs> It helps if you do them all, right? So let's go ahead and complete this one real quick right here. And we'll go ahead and change that one to eight. And there we go. So just starting it off now, what I also can do is go here. Actually, I'll, do, I'll show you guys at the end how we're going to do that part of it. All right, so let's go back to this point. So you can see how we're creating the laces there. Yeah, I got that one. <laughs> all right, yep. And we're going to weld it, absolutely. So we're going to go here and weld it all together. Exactly, so we're gonna go weld, but before we weld it, we got to make sure we do one thing because look, if I go back to that wireframe, that's what we were looking at right now. All right, so we still gotta do one more thing there. What is it? Oh, you guys are good, you guys are good today. So, yes, we're gonna go up here to where it says convert outline to object. We're gonna go ahead and left click on that. Now we can go in and do our weld. So, there we go, there's our weld. Now you can see where we went off a little bit there, so I can double click on that line there, highlight my node, hit delete, and that's going to delete that for me. Let's go ahead and delete that one as well. Now one thing I can do, let's go here and do to curve. So when I go to curve, watch this, now I can create a curve with this. You See this? So now we can create that into a nice little curve if we wanted to. All right. So we'll leave that till the end there, but let's first complete the rest of the ball. All right. So that would be my laces there. All right. Oh, wait, I hear your mouse moving. I see here you see mouse moving, but the laces aren't outlined. Did I miss something? Okay. Um, I did. Okay, yes, you did. Actually, Debbie, I'm sorry. That was one we did. Let me go back a couple steps here. All right. So let's go ahead and finish this one off. Since now we have the option to do that, let me go here, Bezier, bam, create that straight line. All right, so what we did was let's, we went here, changed that point size. So we went to, let's say, 8. Or if you want to make it just a little bit more, let's go 10. Now, of course, when I go to my wireframe, it's still just the lines. So it's still an outline. The, yes, it did change. I went back, uh, Debbie. I did a, I just did Control-Z, Control-Z to go back to where we were showing this part of the, of the design here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this. And then now because I know what's going to happen, I'm gonna, let's go here. And move this line just a little bit further out, like so. And we'll do the same thing with this one. We'll move this one just a little bit further out here. So now when I add that, there we go. Perfect. So now we can go here, highlight this. And again, we got to go up here to the top and do where it says convert outline to object. We need to convert that. Basically, it's in an outline format right now. And we just need to convert it to it recognizes it as an object. So it's going to give it those actual those thick lines. It's going to read it as an object, not just a little thin outline like you see, like you see here. So we're gonna left click there, and there's my new outline. All right. So now notice how I moved the outside just a little bit. 
So now we have, oops, let me go ahead and zoom in again. So now it's not going to be overlapping when we do the weld. All right, so again, it's overlapping. So let's basically select them all at once, go to the top and hit weld. Left click on our weld, and there we go. And again, later on, we can go in, and if you really want to get fancy with it, we can change those around. Um, but let's just go ahead for the purposes of the, of the webinar. We're just going to keep moving along. All right, so let's go back to the, the wireframe and keep going along this line here because now we got to create this outline right here because that really gives it that kind of that laces look to the design all right so we're going to go again back to my b spline tool here and we're just going to go ahead and create this outline now i'm going to reach this point right here let me see actually i'm not going to create a all right so again just going along that design right there now I could technically go through that, but I think I'm just gonna leave it as is right here. Uh, Rhonda, the weld button, if you go to object and shaping, it's gonna be weld right here. Or let's say we have two objects we wanna weld like this. If you highlight both of them, notice you have a new toolbar at the top here that pops up. This is, this is if you don't have the TRB Stone Wizard toolbar um, option installed on your computer and your Corel Draw. Because that one's right here, the weld is right here in the in my Corel Draw toolbar that was created with the TRW Stone Wizard, but it also pops up at the top toolbar here in Corel, so you can just hit that one and it actually um, welds them together. All right, and guys, I do appreciate everybody's questions. You guys are being awesome with these questions, giving, keeping the webinar flowing and uh, asking great questions. So always appreciated. All right, so let's go ahead and finish off the end part here. So now, I think. Let me see something because I think if I go like this, let me see. Let's see if it's going to fit. Uh, I don't think it's going to work out that way. All right, that, no worries though. Let's just go ahead and retrace this one then. And this one's going to be a little, it's a little bit tougher to see, but you can see the outline of it. Very, it's kind of hard. It's fading out, but that's all right. At least I know kind of what it looks like. So we're going to go here and just double click there. So now we've had the outline, the laces. What are you guys thinking so far? Um, Jill, when viewing nodes, show them how adjusting arrows, tips. Okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, I can show them that as well. That's a great, um, Jill, that's a great point there. Now I'm going to show them here. What Jill's referring to is notice how when, let's say, we create, I double click on my, on the football part, right, on the outside part there. If I click on a node, I deleted that one. So notice uh, how we have our points right here. Now let's say if I created something like this. Let me see here. Let me see, Joe. If, let me see if I if I if I can understand what you're saying here. Oh, shape tool. So so you're saying compared to this right here, compared to moving the lines, is that what you're referring to? Let me know if that if, if that's where you mean moving the lines like that, Jill. Now, if it does have the control point arrows, it, or is that what you're saying, the control point arrows, Jill? Yeah, the control point arrows, you'll be able to move just the sides of the of that node, not the whole entire line. And that's a great point. Now, and I can I can get to that point as well, Jill. No problem. All right, so we have our outline there. So let's see what we're working with right now. All right, so let's right click and unlock object there. So let's pull away. Our football, and that's what we got going on right now. All right, so so far so good. So let's go in here, and let's go ahead and finish this off here. So we're gonna go ahead and select the outline here, and let's go ahead and make that a little bit thicker. And again, it doesn't have to be the same thickness as the laces, obviously. So we can go eight, and let's go a little bit less than that. Let's go about ooh, four. Let's see, that might work as well. You know what we could do? We can bring this down just a tad bit. So let's bring this down, select just that laces part there, and now we can go ahead and complete this process here. So let's go eight. Now, what do you guys think about the the laces here? We'll go eight as well. Actually, we'll just go ahead and uh, do the eight there. You guys should have told me it's going to be too big that way. So let's just go back to our four. All right, so we'll make it a little bit thinner so that way it, does, it stands out a little bit more. And let's go ahead and move some nodes down here just so it fits a little bit better. All right, 
perfect. Now this line right here, I'm gonna make a little bit thinner. That's because that's kind of that faded, kind of that um that line going down here in the bottom. And then oh, I gotta make that one go through the top as well, don't I? Oh, guess we forgot a line. Let's go back a couple steps here, back to the football area. You guys should have told me that. I didn't realize we missed one there. All right, so let's finish this line, the our thin line going through right here. All right. How do you turn this into a three color rhinestone template? Yes. All right, Pam, I can show, oh wait, rhinestone template? I can show you that, Pam. I'm not gonna go, th obviously I can't go through the process of creating the the rhinestone design, but I can kind of show you some tips on how to do it. All right, so let's go back here. And yeah, I heard don't do it. <laughs> that could be, uh, so what do you guys think? Don't, let's stop here. You guys think it's better to do it this way? Or go through the middle. Yes, like it like this, where it's just kind of fading. Okay, yeah, me too. I agree. Yep. Yep, perfect. All right, so now we got that part completed. Let's right click out of here and let's remove our football. All right, so what are we looking at? Pretty good, right? So far, so good. So let's go back here. All right, now, oh, let me see. Is this okay? So we have our line right here. Now, this line right here, we probably want to leave just probably around that same point size, maybe just a little bit bigger, maybe like a one, so it stands out more. And then same thing with these right here. We'll make these. Notice how what I'm doing here, guys, to click on them is basically holding down shift. Yep, exactly. Shift, and then click on every single one. And Debbie keeps saying, yes, don't don't, don't try to uh, rhinestone it out. And it, it, you can, it's just gonna take a lot more editing to do the inside here. All right, so outline usually comes out a little bit better. Um, unless you're really trying to put some time into the designing process. Because it's an odd shape, it's not going to be something that we can just press a button and it's going to place it perfectly in there. There's going to be a lot of tools we're going to need to use with the TRW Stone Wizard to be able to edit it out. All right, so let's go ahead and make those point sizes a little bit more, maybe one. All right, so you can see those all are matching up now. Now let's go down here and we'll do the same thing with this one. We'll do that one out of one. And there's our thinner lines. All right, so now... Let's go ahead and convert our outline here. We'll do that one. At, what do you guys think? Let's see what four. I think four is fine. We'll leave it at four there. And then it's not touching up here, so that's good. But we can actually move that down a little bit. I thought we did that last time, so we will do it again this time. All right. Let's double click on that and bring this one down just a tad bit. And then same thing with this one. Double click on that one and bring it down just a tad bit. There we go. So now it fits a little bit better. Now we're getting this bull rolling. What do you guys think? So far, so good. Excellent. All right, so let's go here. Select this outline here. We'll select this one as well. So hold shift and then click on this one. And then we're going to click on the outline as well. So now we have these three par parts of our design selected. All right. So now that we have all those three selected, let's go ahead and actually, you know what? Let me do this first. Let's go here, here, and then make those a little bit thicker. So we can make those, I believe, four that we were using. So there we go. Let's select this one, this one, and this one. Because now they're all now we're gonna have to weld them together, but notice what we have to do, guys. Before we do anything else, guess where we're at? We're at that point again where we have to use a specific. Yep, there we go, Jill. Jill's on top of things. So we're gonna highlight it all because I want to convert all of it into again an object. I can go highlight all, hit convert, and now we've converted this design. So now we have those overlapping lines again. So let's get rid of those. I can highlight my design, and what are we gonna do again? Yep, hit weld, exactly. So there we go, now we've welded that together. There's my design. Now we can go in here, and in this case, I you know, I probably wanna use the Smart Fill tool, but here's my outline here. Now you can make, obviously, we can make this, these little lines a little bit thicker or thinner, how, however you like. Let's say, we wanna now color this in. Let's go in here and get our Smart Fill tool. Again, we can do this with this tool here. Bam, we'll create this here, here. We'll create that one, this one as well, and this one as well. And then, of course, this is going to be white right there. Now, actually, let me fill in this one as well. So we'll fill this in with white. And there we go. And that would be my outline. So let's go right-click, and I can just right-click up here to get rid of my outline. Oh, you know what it did? I see what it did here. I don't want to do that. Hold on. There we go. It's combined. So there's my outline there. And there's my two color design. So what do you guys think?
pretty good, right? So what I can do is I can go here and actually make this the inside right here black. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. Oh, that is definitely not black. Guessing I'm going a little colorblind. So there will be my design right there. I can right click and then just get rid of my outline by right clicking up here at the top. So there's there's that design. So what do you guys think? There's my two color football ready to rock and roll. What are you guys thinking? Pretty nice, right? Not only is it easier, but it just comes out nicer. Obviously, you don't have to worry so much about later on about doing any kind of tracing or excuse me, any kind of uh, node editing or anything like that. But it actually comes out pretty nice, right? Now, it's just about being able to follow the correct steps to get to that finished product. So, uh, honestly, I wasn't even planning on doing this football. I was just going to completely go off and do something completely different. But that's what you guys wanted to see, and it's always nice to be able to show you guys some different things as uh, you know on the go so that way you guys can see it in real life so if i did mess up you guys can see me messing up in real life like there were some instances where i had to go back and redo some things because again i didn't practice it to do this i've actually never even used this file before to to copy it so it was kind of on the on the go we created this and you know you saw the real life uh if i messed up i messed up and i kind of went from it and fixed the issues and then went from there and honestly i think that helps you guys a lot more than if i had a perfect setup every time every webinar i created a perfect design without showing you some different things that will go wrong in the designing process um, because ultimately what happens is you guys are just starting out so of course i can go through it real quick and do it but if i if you guys can see me kind of going through some different steps and you know even if i run to some points where i do mess up and i re and i fix it you know it's real life that happens all right, so don't be overwhelmed just if you're going and you see and you messed up. Hey, control Z as in control Z as in zebra. That's a huge key because you can just very quickly go back and undo what you just did and keep going from that point on. So, again, don't be afraid if you mess up to keep going. That's the whole point. Just go back, fix the issue and then keep tracing. But again, with the repetition is really the only way to get this process down here. Again, I never really I don't ever use trace bitmap anymore. It's just to me is just I feel like I waste more time editing and then at the end of it I'm like man I don't even like the way it looks so there's no point for me to go through that process and then at the end of it be frustrated because I, it didn't come out the way I wanted to it's almost like taking control of the design and being able to do exactly what you want when you're doing your own tracing um, Shandy would you have to do anything different for HCV and glitter vinyl um, just do the magic trap Shandy um, let's see what happens so let's go here let me show you what's gonna happen here all right, so let's get rid of, um, let's go ahead and grab this part of the design, and I'm going to right-click on it and break it apart. All right, so exactly what we did before, Shandy. So in this case, I would select the outside layer here because this is what we're looking at now. And again, this actually looks pretty cool like this as well. So if you guys want to cut it out like this as well, and maybe it looks like I should have fixed that line just a tad bit there, but that's all right, no problem. All right, but what I'm going to do here, and again, you see how I did hit Control z as in Zebra to go back. Now I can go here, change that color to green. Let's right click on my football here. I can go back order to back of page. And there's my two color design. All right. Now I did hear somebody say a three color design. So what I would do is, let's say you want to make this a different color. You can do that. Obviously the laces will have to be white as well. So there's my design. Let's say you want to make the black here. Now I'm going to bring up the stone wizard just for the time for uh, to make this a little bit quicker. So I can select on one of the blacks here, one of the black colors there, S select all same colors. So now I selected all of those. And let's go ahead and make that purple, or excuse me, purple. I'm losing it. Long trip. All right, we'll make those uh, brown to make it the actual football colors there. Now at this point right here, Shandy, with the wizard, if you hit edit, now I can magic trap it. All right. So by magic trapping, because this layer right here, let me go ahead and select all the white again and make that black. So right here where we have the black layers, let's go ahead and combine all those. So I'm going to select just the outline here or everything that's selected there. And uh, let's go here, black. Oh, actually, let me select all the black and combine. All right, so oh, looks like I messed something will happen in here that I have an extra layer back here. <laughs> Not sure how that layer got in there, but I think too many going back and forth. So we'll just keep it here. But once you have that solid, if I go all the way back to that point where I did the break curve apart there, so let me go back here. I just started messing around with all these different colors. Okay. So at this point right here, when I move this to the back, this is the point right here where I can highlight my design and hit that magic trap. And it's going to magic trap it for me. All right. So right here is where you want to do that magic trap. Now, of course, if I want to show this design off, 
let's highlight my black. Let's select everything that's black in here. And uh, let's go ahead and do magic vinyl that we can make this. Uh, let's make it a brown. Uh, tough color. That uh, that a uh, brown is a tough color to come around. Let's go. Even if you want to make a royal blue for right now, and we'll make the football part here white. And there's my football, ready to rock and roll. Fashion leather, yes, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> it's funny because I knew that. And uh, for some reason, it just one of those brain fart moments there. But it's all right. So what we have here is we do have the fashion vinyl. Thank you so much, Sandy. You're, look at that, I'm top of things already. All right, so we're going to go here. And we're just going to go ahead and make that, let's say, white glitter. And there we go. Now, of course, what I would do is I would go in here and change the color of these. Oh, got, actually, got to remove these. Sorry about that. Looked like I, uh, that was from the magic trap earlier, but remove those and this is what we have left over here. All right, so you can see we have the outline here. We have our laces at the top. We have the football. Now I can go here, bam, delete these two. Let's do real quick. We can do a, now I'm going to get a little crazy here for you guys, but that's fine. So I can go here. Actually, you know what? We're not going to do that. That would confuse you guys. I was going to make make a magic template out of this, but at least you get to, get to see the point here. Now, if you really want to, you can get a little bit fancy. Just move it around a little bit. Go to your mock-ups. We're going to go to uh, single shirt only to the front here. And I did cheat. I said I wasn't going to bring out the wizard today. But just for the purposes of showing you the, out, the design in a mock-up, left-click there. And, of course, I don't have the right selection there. So let me go ahead and go to TRW there. So as you can see, I've done a lot of webinars in using my mock-up feature here. So I don't even know which one's the one that I need to use anymore, the correct one. I got to go through them and actually fix them up. But I think it might be this TRW one. So let's now try it again. Nope. All right. So something happened to my wizard here with my mock-up. So I'll figure it out. But uh, oh, you know what? I think I know what it is. Let's go here. I see what is going on. I don't have a logo on this computer, it looks like. So it's throwing it off a little bit. But here we go. It's on my shirt. We have the copyright on the background. So there's that design completed. Obviously, if you want to change the color of the shirt, we can go here, change the color. But again, we have that nice football right there. I can go back. Now, again, I'm just showing off at this point. But let's say we want to create an outline of, of rhinestones around this particular ball right here. I can highlight the outline here. Looks like I got an extra layer in there as well. I don't know what I did in the process of getting to this point, but we, uh, we've we got a, quite a lot of layers here, huh? There we go. <laughs> so I think uh, that might have been throwing it off a little bit as well. All right, so now we got all these layers here. Let's say we want to create a rhinestone dis or rhinestone outline around it. Tra <laughs> happens to you every time, Tracy? I'm not sure what happened in the process of me going back and forth and re-showing things. And it's something that, I mean, it just happens. And so I just tried so many times going back and forth, showing you guys different things that, I don't know, somewhere in between, we added a couple layers in there. But that's fine. No worries. Just make sure before you guys cut, make sure you verify that everything's going right. Do you, Maxine? Yeah, just make sure you go in there and just delete those layers just in case. It might have been, an, it might have been something simple I did in, in, along the way, but that's fine. All right, so now that we have that completed... Now we can go here, highlight my design, or excuse me, highlight just the outline there. I can do a boundary to the outside. This is that's all I want to place the stones around. Go place and fill. We can do one island to the outside. Bam. Now again, this is a pretty nice design. It's six and a half or six and a half inches wide, so not bad. So we can go here. We're gonna go add stones, 0.07, and let's do bam corner detect. Now we got stones around it. There we go. Clear paths. Now we have, let's just do crystal on those. Actually, that might not stand out too much. Let's see what happens here. So mock-ups. Now we'll simulate stones here and then left-click on my women's, scoop, or my women's scoop neck down here at the bottom. And there is my brand new design. Let me get rid of the background real quick so you guys can see it. So there's my brand new design. There's my rhinestones. There's my realistic design uh, with the glitter white vinyl and the fashion vinyl there for the football. And, of course, now this can be dropped right there in my Etsy account, my e-commerce account, my Facebook page. You can send it to your customers so they can see the finished product right there. Again, just a lot of ways you can now promote this particular design, just this design right here with the mock-up feature here in the wizard. So, again, I, I cheated a little bit. I brought the wizard in just to do a couple different things. But, obviously, that could be the finished product there just by being able to use your, utilize your tracing tools 
to obviously finish off and complete something just like this. All right. Again, what do you guys think? Better doing it this way than the trace pit map? Awesome. Beautiful. <laughs> awesome, guys. So it looks like uh, looks like we ran a couple minutes over, but that's all right. Glad uh, I'm glad we were able to stay um, stay through it and finish off the at least a you know random design that you guys wanted to pick. So at least you guys saw. Hey, again, I went in with uh, the object the the concept of showing you guys how to use the tracing tools, and you guys said, hey, can you guys can you get create this on the spot? And that was how it's done. So again, you know, I, I appreciate you guys coming by the st stopping by the webinar again. I, I love the communication, um, asking questions. That's what I feel like makes the webinars better. Is is if you guys are asking questions and letting me know exactly what you guys want to see. Obviously, we go in here with this with the with the concept of showing you some tracing tools, but ultimately, I want to make sure that what I'm showing you guys is going to benefit your business as well. So I don't want to go in here and show you a bunch of things that aren't going to help you. So always ask questions, always recommend, give us suggestions. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you guys grow your business. So let us know. Let us know what we can do to do that. And uh, Karen, no, unfortunately, I knew that was coming. I knew it was coming. But unfortunately, I cannot do a coupon code today. Sorry about that, Karen. Pamela, can you do a webinar for creating a trace to make a rhinestone template for those who are not working with vinyl? Pamela, yes. Uh, I, did one, I did one a few months back, actually, where I did trace the – um, a football, I didn't trace it, but I basically used one of our vector files that we already had and showed how to create the outline in rhinestones. And then I created the Falcons football. So that one's on our YouTube channel. I can, uh, Jill, unfortunately, because I took the image from Google, I don't want to, I can't, I can't make the design for free. Again, it was just, I just grabbed it from Google and I put it on, on the webinar just to, for the tracing, but I can't give it away because it's not my design. All right. So I do apologize for that. Um, there was a coach Sunday. Yes, Maxine, there was a coach Sunday for the mega deals. If you, have a, if you guys haven't checked it out, the mega deals are back and stronger than ever. So every Sunday we are doing deals that you guys can check out and take advantage of um, either stones, download files, so on. I mean, even if we're out of, out of town for the for a trade show, don't worry about it. We're still going to have the Sunday mega deals. So make sure you guys utilize those. those again, they're going to be great for saving some money, um, especially with the holidays coming up. I know, I mean, it's crazy. It's already the 20th Halloween right around the corner. Um, you guys, hopefully you guys have some good plans for those. Halloween is one of my favorite holidays, obviously, just because I love to dress up and I love, I love the whole spirit behind it. We need new Christmas design. Sandra, yes, one holiday at a time. But yeah, we're getting close to that. I know the designers have been working hard on a lot of newer designs and uh, obviously Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween, those are all popular designs right now. I know we have basketball season starting up as well. So that's a big one. Those are big designs um, that they're searching for as well. So well, like I said, we got a lot of designers now working on different designs and uh, different categories to help you guys actually grow the business. And obviously, make sure that you guys have enough arsenal ready to go for when your clients come to you guys have these designs ready. Or at least you know that we offer those designs or similar designs that you can go off of. And again, even if you guys purchase a design from us, doesn't mean that's exactly how you guys have to use it. You guys can manipulate it and use some of your different tracing tools like we showed here today to be able to create uh, even more unique design if you guys wanted to, or just create your own more custom design for that particular client. So again, the tracing tool, make sure you guys practice and make, make, make sure you guys are utilizing it. Again, um, it, sometimes it's better to take a little bit more time, or actually all the time it's, it's better to take a little bit more time and actually complete a nice design rather than use the tracing tool, which is, uh, again, it's quicker, but it's just not as efficient. It's, it's going to take, in the long run, it's going to be a lot more painful for you guys. All right. Awesome. Uh, Pamela, let me look into that uh, webinar. I can, I'm sure I can definitely set up something with uh, doing some rhinestones. Awesome, guys. No problem at all, Sandra. No problem, Pamela. Glad. Uh, happy that you guys stopped by today. Again, uh, we had a tough couple weeks there with the trade shows, but we're back now. Uh, we should be – we actually got another trade show coming up in the uh, beginning of, of um, November, I believe. But other than that, it's going to be all education, all webinars, lounges, everything. Um, that we're used to doing as far as the education part of it, uh, just because we're going to be done with the trade show season. So um, we're going to do a lot more webinars for you guys. Now, Maxine, yes, you're right. right? Rhinestone webinar tomorrow. Let me go ahead and show you guys where to find those. So let me bring up the Facebook page real quick for you guys. So under the Facebook page, also under the, we under the website, we have a calendar there. That you guys can check out all the upcoming events, such as the webinars and the trade shows. But I believe, let me see. You see what time it is. I know I have it. I set it up for tomorrow. Just got to figure out exactly what time it's at. 
All right. So tomorrow's webinar, which is going to be mastering the rhinestone soft, or excuse me, the rhinestone window in the TW Stone Wizard. So if you guys scroll down, down here at the bottom where it says upcoming events, let's just click on that one right there. And then right here where it says Tracy made easy, that was today, obviously. And then tomorrow at 11 o'clock a.m. Excuse me. Uh, tomorrow at 11 o'clock a.m. We're gonna have our um, oh, look at that. We got a little comment there. Uh, tomorrow. At 11 a.m. Eastern Time, we're going to have How to Master the Rhinestone Feature in the TRW Stone Wizard uh, software. So that's uh, that's going to be a good one. You know what, Pamela, let me see what I can do for you in that one. I, I might be able to uh, do a couple things in there to uh, throw a couple uh, designs in there I think you might enjoy. All right. So if you guys haven't checked it out, make sure you guys check out this page right here. Uh, we're going to be, again, doing a couple more webinars, a lot more webinars in the upcoming months just because we're going to be done with trade shows. So that's our time to do a lot more. Uh, weekly webinars, those lounges. I know the lounges. We're getting a lot of requests for the lounges, so um, that's going to be a great, uh, great time as well. Donnie, I see my husband and I were at the ISS show for you guys. Was busy. You might. Um, Donnie, hey, can you guys? Yeah, shoot me an email. Let me shoot you. Um, I'll give you my phone number. I'm gonna text. I'm gonna shoot my phone number right now, Donnie. And um, give me a call and I can help you out with this, all right? So I didn't want to read everything out loud, but um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just going off the name that's on the. <laughs> I, I'm just going off the name that's on the. <laughs> that's on the registry here, so that's all I can see is Donnie. So I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but let me. I'm gonna shoot you. I'm gonna send you my my number, my direct number right now, so you can um give me a call later today. I'll be here till 6 p.m. Eastern time or tomorrow, and I can see figure out what's going on with your cutter, right? And uh, sorry to hear. Hopefully everything gets better for you guys. All right. So there's my number. I'm gonna send it privately to you guys. To you. All right, so there you go. You're all set. Uh, give me a call. I'm gonna leave it here for a second. Let me know that you get that number. And give me a call, and I can look into your computer and see what exactly is going on with your cutter. All right. And if if there's anything you can do as far as pictures or email or uh, videos of what's happening with the issue, let me know. I can. Uh... Oh, you know what? Did I not even bring this? Did I not even bring this over here? Wow, I'm sorry. I just realized I was on the wrong screen when I was showing you guys our events page. Wow, one of those days, huh? <laughs> I need to know how to put the Corral Drawn Wizard together. Rhonda, give us a call at the office. We can help you out with that. We can uh, set you up and get you uh, all straight away to get you started with uh, using the software. All right. So here it is. There's uh, there's the events. I'm sorry. I thought I could have sworn I brought this over, but I guess not. But here is the here is the events pa events page which is right here in the Rhinestone World Facebook page. Another great option for you guys and another great source of education and information is crafting with rhinestones and vinyl right here. This is a, actually a group page that we've created. It's all educational, but great items, uh, great information being uh, passed around in here. So if you guys need to uh, check up on a different event, or excuse me, um, kind of keep up to date with what's going on in the industry and see what's happening with the rhinestone vinyl, signed vinyl part of the industry, Sign up for this Crafting with Rhinestones final page, and uh, you guys, I think you guys really enjoy and get a lot out of it. Um, okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah, give me a call. Um, Donnie's wife, give me a call whenever you get a chance. I'm um, sorry, you still haven't given your name, so I'm going to go with that. All right, and then I'll be able to help you out. Um, where can I find that? Okay, thank you. Yep, right there. Yeah, and I apologize. I thought I had that screen over here on the right-hand side. I have the dual monitor, and I was reading it, but I guess you guys wouldn't be able to see it. <laughs> I've been called worse. I would never do that. Don't worry. <laughs> all right, guys. So again, thank you all for joining me today. I'm I'm hoping you guys learned a lot from the webinar. Again, I'm gonna have this recorded and posted hopefully within the next 24 to 48 business hours on the YouTube channel. So make sure you guys check a uh, check it out. And uh, again, let us know what you guys thought of the webinar. Let us know what you uh what you guys want to see in future webinars. Again, this is all for you guys and help your business grow. So just let us know. All right. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Rudy with the Rhinestone World. Have a great afternoon, everybody.